Hello, podcast fans. Adam Carolla here. I'm leading the fight against patent trolls who are threatening this medium. It's not about me. It's about the podcast you're listening to right now. If I go down, this show could be next. So visit fundanything.com forward slash patent troll for more information on how you can keep podcasting alive. Thank you and mahalo. His skin is white just like a ghost Thick Irish roots and his blonde hair And he sounds like a Chicago super fan A music nerd with a collection Of CDs from here to there Yes, Andy Dare is in Chicago Interviewing and barbecuing It's the end Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show. This is episode 114. I am joined by Jason Narducci. He is a huge talent, um, bunch of bands, bunch of stories to tell. He's a funny guy. He's a local guy. Uh, grew up in Chicagoland, started his first punk band at the age of 10, Verboten. And uh, yes, he's got a whole bunch of history in the whole music scene. Now he is fronting the band Split Single And he's also playing bass for the Bob Mould Band. And, uh, yeah, both bands have new albums out. And uh, Bob Mould's will be out on June 3rd. Split Singles album is called Fragmented World and is out now. You can find more about it at splitsinglemusic.com. And we're going to play the title track off the album as well. But Jason was a super nice guy. Um, He's also got funny videos out on the Internet. He's a huge talent. So it was cool to have him. Um, I just have to apologize a little bit for the chintzy quality of the audio on this uh, interview. Um, Yes, he he was very nice and, uh, you know, understanding with the issues that we were having or something to do with the Internet coming in and coming out during uh, our interview. So, yes, he he can sound muffled at times and it comes in, it comes out. But uh, what we did get to talking about was great and I hope the interview stands up. And I just want to thank Jason for his patience and his understanding, and hopefully we'll be able to do it again soon. And uh, yes, because, you know, when when the audio quality is not at its best, I can't really enjoy myself in the interview. And uh, normally this would be an amazing interview for me. And uh, so I do apologize to you, the listener, as well. But uh, hopefully what we did uh, talk about was great, and hopefully he'll be back on soon. So uh, thanks to Jason, and uh, yeah, do check out the new album by Split Single, Fragmented World. It's very cool, and uh, produced great. Um, He's got some great vocals on it, great guitar sounds. Check it out. As for me, I've been uh, staying busy writing articles for EmptyLighthouse.com. It's a cool new, um, you know, movies, music, arts, entertainment, editorials, uh, reviews, and whatnot, EmptyLighthouse.com, and yes, I'll be uh, giving them a couple uh, articles a week, and have some cool stuff. I have my uh, review of the new Pixies album, Indie Cindy. Did I love it? Did I hate it? Was I lukewarm? You'll have to check it out at EmptyLighthouse.com, and uh, also got little articles about every guest that I've had on my show the last couple weeks, so there's articles about Sierra Swan, Demitas, and uh, Dave Hill, so... Do check it out, EmptyLighthouse.com. I want to thank them for uh, allowing me to write articles for them and and also allowing Tyler Kale to write for them. And uh, Tyler Kale, he's one of the talents on my little podcast network called Darer Network. And, uh, yes, he posts a show of the Tyler Kale Show every Thursday. He's uh, from Hollywood, so he has that spin on things. Every Friday you can check out uh, Jay Porks. And he's got the Staten Island, New York City spin of things, you know, talking about going to concerts, all the stuff, uh, being a server in a restaurant, what that's like. And uh, he posts every Monday night. That's the Jay Porks experience. And I post every Saturday. And uh, just want to thank everybody who who subscribed or who's reviewed it on iTunes. Um, Check it out. Search on iTunes. Just search Andy Darer Show. And uh, all the shows can be found at theandydareshow.com. And if you want to uh, continue having us bring you this cool content, 
To support, all you got to do is go to the right-hand side of the page at theandydareshow.com, click on the Amazon link. It takes you directly to Amazon. You spend zero extra cents, zero extra dollars, but you tip your cap to all the fine entertainment here at Dare Network. And uh, we've had some awesome stuff purchased on our Amazon banner. want to thank you guys for helping us keep the lights on here at Honeycomb Hideout Studios in gorgeous Westmont, Illinois. And another way you can uh, support the show is become a member for $1 a month. That's hardly anything. $1 a month, you become a member of the Andy Dare Show. And check that out at Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Darer. And, uh, yeah, that about does it for my spiel. Want to thank Jason for taking the time out to do a cool interview. Want to uh, tell you to check out the new split single album, Fragmented World, and the new Bob Mold album, Beauty and Ruin, which is out June 3rd. And, uh, yeah, without further ado, want to thank you for checking out my show. And here is episode 114 with special guest Jason Nardini. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show, uh, episode 114. Today I am joined by a local guy, Jason Arducey. How you doing, man? Hey, thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah, you got a uh, new album with Split Single, um, Fragmented World, out now. How does it feel like uh, to get back to leading a band after spending so much time uh, working with others, you know? It's pretty cool. It's... Um, uh you know, I took about an eight-year break from writing songs and uh, just found myself with a little bit of time at the end of 2011 and challenged myself to write a bunch of songs. And I was, I was really happy with the first half coming. So it's um, it's been a really fun process. You know, I made the record with a bunch of friends, and that was super quick and easy. And um, it's pretty cool. I, I mean, it's been a while since I've released a record, so this is it's a whole new climate you know in music and um that's been fun too to kind of learn about pressing vinyl and and how to you know reach reach people and how people buy records now it's completely different it's really fast <laughs> super sure. fast now. and um that's exciting i really like it it's really easy to communicate with people and to get me into their hands so yeah so the last album was uh that you fronted as a band was verbo right yeah, White Out, the record that came out in 2000. Yeah, that got quite a lot of press and stuff. And uh, what was, was it band turmoil? Was it on the labels part? I, I saw you were you were with uh, Sony, BMG, what, that 550 music? That that was always kind of a, a label that was given a lot of talent, and they seemed to drop the ball here and there, it seemed. So. No, I think, um, you know, we were music slash epic records, and we did two records with them. Um, no, I have no complaints. I mean, I feel really fortunate that I um, was playing music at a time when there were these huge budgets for records because it was it was kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote these huge checks and you go make a record and then you tour around and um, I I had, I had a great time. But yeah, no no qualms at all. Um, and you know, by the end of that cycle for Whiteout, how often and I had um, you know, written, recorded, toured for three records straight and, you know, just sort of exhausted. And White Out, you know, did sell all that great and it was just sort of like, what are we doing now? And I think we just all sort of needed a break and so we stepped away for a while. But we um we got back together and, and released live record in two thousand and and then did some shows and I mean we're all we're all great friends. But, um, you know, it just needed a break. It just needed to kind of reassess where to life. Sure, yeah, you can only uh, yeah, do the rat race for so long till you just want a little break and try something else. But you guys were all, uh, you guys all met locally in Chicagoland for Bo? Or? Yeah, it started off with Allison and I. We, we started off as an acoustic duo, Jason and Allison, we called it. And um, we released a record called Woodshed under the Jason and Allison name. It was in 94, and then... Got signed to Epic and and did two records for them under the Verbo, V E R B O W. Sure, nice. And uh, 
so like fronting a band now, you got Split Single with John Worcester from the Bob Mold Band, which you uh, also are playing in, which you also have a new album with Bob Mold coming out. Uh, seems like a pretty busy 2014 for you. Is this uh, one of the busiest years of your professional life, or have there been other ones? This year's going to be pretty busy. Not as busy as last year. Last year was uh, really, really busy uh, between the Bob Mold touring and recording and the Super Chunk touring and split single recording. Um, but yeah, this year is, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. It's great to get the split single record out. The reviews have been great. We've got some really fun shows coming up. And, um, and then there's a new mold record in June and there's a lot of touring lined up for that. So yeah, there's even a bunch of super chunk things. Uh, super chunk is going to Europe in May and, um, we're doing, I think doing shows in the summer and maybe even into the fall. So it's, it's going to be good. But, you know, I love doing that. So it's never like, oh, you know, whoa. There's so much, you know. Like, yeah, tough, right? I love playing music. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's a good thing for me. Yeah, that's awesome. I saw you got the free show at Millennium Park. Um, a little, like, concert series they're doing uh, free shows this summer. I'm sure that'll be a huge grab for everybody involved. You, you got Bob Mould uh, headlining and then Split Single, the opener. So that should be pretty, June 23rd, pretty cool. Yeah, June 23rd at uh, Pritzker Pavilion in Millennium Park, free show, WXRT show. Um, I'll be doing double duty. That's nice. <laughs> How about this? Do, do you ever get uh, in the middle of a set? And you forget which band you're playing with, or who's like who's uh, you know leading the band at the time? Because I mean, you got John Worcester playing with Super Chunk, Bob Mold, Split Single. Do you ever do you ever like just uh, daydream in the middle of a set and say, okay, what are we doing? Split Single or Bob or uh, Super Chunk? <laughs> no, it's sort of confusing. Uh, I, yeah, John is the drummer in those bands, and he recorded the Split Single record. But Split Single, it's that John Worcester and Britt Daniel were kind enough to provide their talents for the record, but I, I do the shows with other guys, and um, yeah, I mean Super Chunk and and Bob Mold, you could, I mean, I could see how somebody would say, oh, it's kind of similar music, but it really doesn't feel. There's never any confusion about that, you know. I mean, you first of all, I'm spending the day with whatever and I'm with. You know, yeah. so you're like you're having lunch and then you do sound check and then you're talking about the set list and you're you know, I mean you're at the same hotel, so it's not like, whoa, where did you guys come from? You know? <laughs> nice. I don't just fly in and then roll up you know, like Morrissey or something. But um <laughs> the um it's never confusing but it's it's I re- I really enjoy playing with both bands. I mean Bob Mould is you know, after Pete Townsend he's my favorite rock guy ever nice. <laughs> you know so like playing with i mean that, that never goes away where i'm on stage and just home you know I, he he's pretty exciting to play with and his music is so interesting to me that um I never lose that you know fanboy thing i mean i you know i don't think i can talk to myself that way but um it really is exciting to be on the same stage with him super chunk i get with him later I think the first time I saw them was in 2006. I was playing power in Austin, Texas, and we shared a bill. And uh, yeah, I was blown away. I mean, the energy was fantastic. And um, so I was kind of a late latecomer with with their music, but um, it's been great. They've really been to me. I mean, sort of a unique situation. We both have a hearing condition, so she yeah, she's she's still in the band. You know, she still records and. And does the videos and stuff, um, but they're, they've been they, Laura and have done a great job of making me feel uh, part of it. And past the people, I love the song. I did a great job of a set list every night, and I'm learning songs constantly. And that's fun for me. That the, I feed off of that. You know, I like uh, learning nice. songs and stuff. I can perform that night for me. Yeah, just for touring. I'm not really replacing her. She's she's still in the band, but she asked me to uh, do the shows because she's got this uh, condition in her ears that doesn't, you know, she can't uh, be around loud sounds for an extended period of time. I got you. Nice. So, uh, yeah, so she just doesn't want to go on the tour, but uh, so you're going to be replacing her on the live shows. And uh, yeah, I think she what... wants to. Yeah. I think she wants to, but she's got this hearing thing, so she can't. I got you. Yeah, it's tough. 
Um, those last two Super Chunk uh, reunion albums are incredible, and uh, Mac has some of his strongest uh, songwriting I've heard since you know the mid '90s. And for Super Chunk, um, how does it feel like uh, to take those new songs on uh, out on the road? It's been cool. I mean, there's there's a couple of them that immediately you know feel like you know big big hits with the fans. Uh, uh, me and you and Jackie Me Too in front of house and um, there's a bunch of them that are just like immediately the crowd is like yeah so that's kind of cool um, but they have so many it's it's really nice how many different uh, they have so many records that we can play different set lists every night and and it's really it's cool I like touring with them a lot and Max still he runs like the record label Merge correct yeah, he and Laura have merged records. They started it 25 years ago. They're actually having their 25th anniversary weekend in Chapel Hill, North Carolina in July. So I'll be playing there with Super Chunk and also with Bob Mould because Bob Mould is on merge records as well. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that'll be a really cool weekend celebration. They've uh, they've done very well. Yeah, that is so awesome. I mean, Sub Pop 2, they just uh, did their 25th anniversary. I think it was last year. So it, it's awesome that uh, they start these little tiny labels and uh, they build momentum, build a huge fan base, and uh, yeah, still going strong 25 years later. As you mentioned, in a uh, an ever-changing world of commerce for music, I mean, it's really tough to make a, a cent selling music nowadays. So it's really it's really turned uh, a lot of bands really need to hit the road nowadays and. Uh, need to do other things like, uh, you know, go on radio shows, go on podcasts, go on TV, stuff like that. Have you found, uh, as you were saying, like when Verbo kind of uh, broke up for the first time, it was, you know, the music industry was still selling records. There were still record stores on every other corner, it seemed like, and now they're all shutting down. Have you really felt the need to supplement record sales, obviously, with other, you know, avenues? Um, you know, I don't think too much about it. I just... Um... I think there's more bands now and more bands touring. And so, um, and also people are getting this downpour of information, whether it's through emails or on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, that there's just so much information out there that they're sifting, they're trying to sift through it all. I, I, the same thing with me. I'm just trying to like sift through all this information that's thrown at me every day. <laughs> sure. yeah. And um, so it feels like less sticks, you know, like I had a, a friend of mine, Last week, um, he didn't know I had a new record out. He's like a really close friend. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess I'll post again that I have a new record out. You there's know, just like, so much stuff, uh, you're right. Like, uh, there's so much information. There's so many bands. There's so many movies. There's so many television shows. There's so many video games. So that's what's different. Um, but that's not, I mean, that's, uh, most of that I'm, I, I actually enjoy quite a bit. I think um, there's a little bit of the sadness that the record stores haven't been able to keep open. There's there's still a bunch that are great across the country, but um, I I grew up you know working in record stores in the late '80s, and that was a great way to not only um, find music but also communicate about music. You know, you'd be playing a record in the store, and somebody oh who is this and sure. tell them who it is, and then oh you might like this, and it's not this computerized you know. Um, the original Twitter, the record store. Yeah. <laughs> and what type of music you might like. There's actually people communicating about and sure. getting feedback. And I, I missed that a little bit. but. Well, uh, yeah, I like the record store day. This, uh, this year was pretty great because I went to Reckless Records up in Wicker Park, and uh, it was completely packed for a an intimate Kim and Kelly deal um, little pared-down set and autograph signing. And, oh, cool. uh, yeah, it was totally cool. They played, you know, gigantic, they played cannonball and, uh, totally good spirits and everything. Kim and Kelly were completely nice. And, uh, even though they did give one jab at Frank Black referring to him as Satan in between one of the songs. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so a guy in front of me, he bought a stack of Pixies albums probably drop 50 bucks on it and as right as he's about to get him signed a lady comes in in front of him and says yeah they won't be signing any of the pixies albums they're not on good terms with them so um, yeah okay. I, no comment <laughs> <laughs> nice but uh yeah it was just it was totally a good experience because the whole store was packed they're selling uh records left and right um 
something that I wouldn't have expected five years ago would be the resurgence in vinyl sales and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely opened my eyes to, hey, there might be life after all these stores close. You know, they're, they're, the few that survive will get stronger and, uh, you know, record stores aren't going anywhere anytime soon. That's how I feel from record store day. We, um, we actually shot a Bob Mould video in Portland on record store day at a record store. Oh, nice. We shot it at Music Millennium. And so it was pretty crazy because there was a line around the block and we're inside trying to make a video and then we went outside and <laughs> shot with people in the line and yeah, it'll be uh it'll be very interesting to see how that all turned out. It was cool. a good issue. It was that planned that it was record store day? Like uh uh-huh. Oh, okay, yep. cool. So yeah, so that's probably uh something off the new album. What's the what's the song? I don't know you anymore. Oh, I I, I actually heard that one. Very awesome. And uh, when's the new Bob Mould album dropping? June 3rd. June 3rd, nice. And that's on Merge, too? Yep. Nice. It's all kind of a happy uh, f- happy family with these guys. And uh, All right, I thought we'd take a little break and hear something off the brand new album. This is a split single with uh, the title track to the album Fragmented World. Um, out now, check it out at splitsinglemusic.com. Yeah, just uh, taking it back to the to, like for your roots a little bit. Verboten was your first band. You started as a uh, young teenager, correct? Uh, no, I was not a teenager. I was ten years old when when Verboten formed. <laughs> That's twelve really cool. when we broke up. <laughs> You'd already seen it all by twelve, and uh, nice, ready to move on. But uh, <laughs> yeah, how about that original like uh, Chicago punk scene? Naked Ray Gun, Big Black. Um, all that stuff was, uh, were you, you guys were probably too young to really get your feet into that at the time. No, we opened up for Naked Ray Gun and Rights to the Accused. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. We, uh, we used to play Cubby Bear and uh, a couple other clubs and yeah, it was, a, it was an exciting time. Um, there's actually a really good documentary about it called You Weren't There that, um, talks about Verboten and interviews me and, um, Cool. And Vic Bondi from Articles of Faith, and yeah, it's a really good movie. And Jeff Pizzotti was like a good older brother or mentor, or yeah, you know, I don't remember meeting Jeff back then, um, but since then we've connected a bunch. Um, I'd say of all those people, I'm closest with Vic Bondi. He lives out in Seattle. I see him a lot, um, but I, you know, I saw Jeff at Riot Fest last in Denver last. Uh, September and uh, you know we gave each other a big hug and it was great to see him. How about uh, Steve Albini, a friend or uh, just a? 
Yeah, I mean, hey. uh, acquaintance. You know, I don't know him very well. Um, we actually recorded the new Bob Mold record at Electrical Studios at wow. Steve's place. Steve wasn't, uh, he was working on a different record, um, but um, we were in his studio and, and saw him quite a bit. Nice, yeah, about uh, three years ago, we asked him for an interview just doing something like this over the phone, and he goes, Hell, why don't you guys uh, just bring all the, or just come right over to the studio and we'll chat for an hour? And we're like, really? We weren't expecting Steve to be so open with it and stuff. And uh, yeah, totally nice guy. He had this kind of uh, a reputation as being like the Darth Vader of indie rock, you know, being very must be tape, must be analog, and all that stuff. When we actually met the guy, he couldn't be funnier. He couldn't be more uh, down to earth, lighthearted, you know, cracking jokes about animal crackers and just weird stuff like that. And a uh, totally nice guy. Finally, he said, uh, yeah, I'm going to go up and eat dinner with the missus. And we just let ourselves out of electrical audio. So uh, it was a totally nice experience and kind of a cool little Chicago thing. Um, so how about the Chicago suburbs? Are you from the north suburbs or uh, was it Evanston? I live in Evanston. Is that where you uh, grew up or where did you grow up? Uh, all over Chicago. My mom lived on the south side for a while, uh, 53rd and Woodlawn. Uh, my dad was up in Rogers Park. Um, I lived in apartments over by Montrose and uh, uh, Richmond. Cool. Um, yeah, it was like 14 different apartments when I when Jeez. I grew up between, between my two divorced parents. But ended up in Evanston. By the time I was in high school, I went to ETHS and then um, – went to college in Baltimore and then came back and lived in the city for a while. And then I, I'm back in Evanston. I've got kids and Evanston's a great place for a uh, public school system. Oh yeah. It seems like a real nice place. And, uh, are you trying to, are they into music too, the kids or how old are they? They're not as passionate about it as I am, but they all have musical abilities and talents. Um, you know, I mean, I, I was sort of, uh, a strange kid to be playing punk, you know, playing sure. rock clubs at the age of 10. So um, that's, a, that's an unusual bar um, to live up to. But um, no, they like music. We have we have little dance parties down in the, in the playroom. And, nice. um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. It's, it's cool to see like the new generation, how they will a- approach music. And uh, yeah, it's just a waiting game and I'm sure they will. And uh, Yes, uh, so the new album, Split Single, Fragmented World. How come Fragmented World? Does that go back to what we were talking about with uh, so much, uh, you know, input of information, you know, with the Twitter, all the social media stuff, a constant stream of information? Or where did Fragmented World No, no, World Fragmented is like Broken Heart. Oh, it's more of a lovesick thing, type deal. Huh. Yeah, it's, there's a song on the, on the album called Fragmented World, and I wrote it. Um, it's, I mean, it's less than two minutes long. It's really short little pop song. Uh, I wrote it with an acoustic guitar standing over my grill, making dinner for the family. Um, and that was the, that was the phrase that fell out of my head. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. Um, cool. So that's out now and the Bob mold on June 3rd. Um, what's that one called again? Beauty and ruin, beauty and ruin on merge records, June 3rd. Um, you're on Twitter at split single music. Uh, split single band. Split single band. Okay. The web. The website is split single music. Split single music. dot com for all the info. And uh, yeah, just uh, one last thing before you go. Thanks for putting up with all the technical difficulties and everything. Um, I did read that uh, pretty cool dude Dave Grohl said uh, you are one of the reasons he got into rock and roll. And uh, if you just want to enlighten my audience on that. I, when I was playing in Verboten, um, our lead singer, Tracy, uh, is cousins with Dave. So Dave came to Aviston with his family to just visit. You know, it's like a family for a week-long visit. And uh, he got this best practice, and um, we were his introduction to punk rock. And um, he, you know, he's he's very generous by giving me that kind of credit. But, um uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's just awesome yeah man. yeah he's i mean he's a fantastic guy and an incredible talent and um yeah so he's he's it was nice for him on the split single bio to uh allow to be quoted in such a way <laughs> yeah that is awesome we and a, just, um, we have a video um it's about split single about me and that 
includes all the footage from Dave saying that, and it's got Bob Mould and Britt Daniel and John Worcester and myself talking about the record. Um, it should come later in May. Cool, and that's on Split Singles or SplitSingleMusic.com, right? Mm-hmm. All right, sounds good. Um, yes, um, thank you so much for taking the time out. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, pick up the new Split Single album and the new Bob Mold when it comes out June 3rd. And uh, yeah, thanks again for taking the time out. Any last words, Jason? Thank you very much. Andy. All right, we'll talk to you later. On behalf of Jason Narducci, this is Andy signing off for the Andy Darer Show. This episode of The Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue in Westmont, Illinois. Family owned and operated since 1997, Uncle Bub's is the real deal barbecue. A family-friendly restaurant open seven days a week. Also, it's a full-service catering company doing weddings, pig roasts, luau's, grill packages, you name it. They have a friendly, helpful staff that will make sure that your party goes off without a hitch. Call them at 630-493-9000. Visit them at 132 South Cass Avenue in Westmont, Illinois, and UncleBubs.com. Hey, man, I know you like grilling. I know you like getting those dark grill marks on your burgers, fish, chicken. And I know you don't want to just dry your meat out like you're cooking with a hairdryer. Why not get the man grate and click through the AndyDareShow.com's banner so we can keep the lights on here at Honeycomb Hideout Studios in gorgeous Westmont, Illinois. The man grate. This episode of the Andy Dare Show is brought to you in part by Record Utopia, a music lover's dream with thousands of vinyl records, musical instruments, and sound gear. They buy, sell, and trade. Give them a call at 630-963-1957. Visit them in Westmont, Illinois at 309 West Ogden Avenue on the web at recordutopia.com. It's always a good, relaxed atmosphere. Check them out. Record Utopia. Be sure to follow Andy on Twitter. That's at Andy Dare. And like our show on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the Andy Dare Show. Videos at youtube.com slash Andrew Martin Dare. And we're on iTunes. Just search the Andy Dare Show. Please leave a review. Thanks so much to our wonderful sponsors, Uncle Bub's award-winning barbecue, Record Utopia, The Man Great, and Amazon.com. Theme song courtesy of Rich Banks Music. Thank you so much for checking out the Andy Dare Show. TheAndyDareShow.com